Slovenia recently sent 28 M55S tanks to Ukraine, in exchange for 40 trucks from Germany. And I couldn't believe the heaps of misinformation that originated from this, both about the deal itself and the actual M55S tanks, that is, their technical characteristics. A lot about this deal didn't sit right with me, because I've heard about the original deal from April, where Slovenia was supposed to deliver 30 M84 tanks in exchange for German Leopard 2A4 tanks. And why would they give almost 30 tanks in exchange for some trucks? So I did some digging. I found out that the original deal for 30 M84 tanks involved Germany giving 15 Leopard 2A4s in return. But Slovenia demanded more than 15, and Germany refused. Then another discussion took place and after months it was decided that Slovenia would donate 28 of their M55S tanks to Ukraine in exchange for 40 trucks from Germany. I couldn't find what trucks were exactly the ones they would be receiving, all I kept seeing was just 40 trucks. I managed to find in a Slovenian media article that the trucks are heavy 8x8 trucks, so I asked my friend Tobias if he could find anything in German, and he did, quite a bit. The trucks Slovenia is getting in return are actually 8x8 Rheinmetall multi trucks. These trucks are extremely good and cost quite a lot. Germany would also provide any necessary support for the vehicles as well as training. Tobias also managed to find how much those trucks cost. In 2018, Bundeswehr got 2,271 of those trucks for around 900 million euros, which would put the price of one truck at around 400,000 euros. That is quite a bit, but how much do M55S tanks cost? Well, I managed to dig up quite a bit of information about that too. I managed to find a detailed report about the M55S tanks, which I will also come back to later in the video when I discuss the technical characteristics of the tank. I also want to mention that the report is from one of the official websites of the Slovenian Ministry of Defense. Originally, Slovenia paid around 1.75 million euros to modernize one T55 to M55S standard back in the 90s, but after they retired them in 2016, they then put them up for sale for 820,000 euros per unit. But no one wanted to buy them, because the tanks are pretty bad. We will come back to that later, trust me. So they kept lowering the price, and the latest known offer they were selling was 13 tanks for 2.6 million euros, together with all expendables like ammunition and smoke launchers. That would put the price per one tank at 200,000 euros, practically two times less than the price of the multi truck. And those trucks that Slovenia received are brand new as well. The official statement from Rheinmetall states that Slovenia will be receiving 40 brand new trucks, which means that they are fully worth that 400,000 price. And as I said already, the trucks are really worth that price. Let's just say that they are called multi for a reason. So yeah, Slovenia got more than they could have ever gotten by just selling those tanks. And not like they would have sold them in the first place. No one wanted to buy them. And now we will get to why no one did. Since this deal has been made public, a lot of people started saying how great this tank is, spreading a lot of misinformation about it in the process. But by all modern standards considered, this tank is pretty bad. This tank is basically a T-55 tank with basic steel armor and ERA slapped on top, and its 100mm gun replaced by a 105mm NATO gun. And the gun is the biggest source of misconceptions. Everyone clings to the fact that it is a NATO gun, but the gun is the old 105mm L7 gun from the early 60s. It is practically as old as the T-55 tank it is mounted on. There have been a lot of people saying there is a wide range of ammunition for the gun, which is true, but Ukraine got what Slovenia had. That was the part of the package. And the ammunition is the real deal breaker here. Luckily, the ammunition is listed in the report that I have mentioned, and it includes M456 APFSDS, M152 Heat, and M156 Hash. Now, you might think that that is good, but it's not. The main problem here is the lack of high explosive fragmentation projectiles that both Russia and Ukraine have been using extensively during this war, and which even the T 62 tanks have. The Hash ammunition is not designed to be anti infantry but try to be used against fortifications and light vehicles, and is very much obsolete for modern standards. 
But during the late 90s, when Slovenia was procuring guns and ammunition from Israel, Israel didn't have any fragmentation projectiles to offer them. Only now are they offering M110 high explosive multi purpose projectile that would fill that role. But there is no information whatsoever about Israel sending those to Ukraine. And I honestly doubt they ever will. And since tanks are mainly fighting infantry in this war, this is a massive downside. Another misconception about the ammunition that keeps coming up is that the 105mm ammunition can penetrate T-72 tanks. Well, that is kind of true, it is pretty weak. The APFSDS listed in the report is the M456 APFSDS, and it is not bad by any means. The projectile was pretty much brand new when Slovenia got it, and it can, from what I could find, deal with some of the older tanks that Russia has been using, especially the T-80 BV tanks. Regular BV is not the BVM, but it is questionable if it can penetrate more armored T-72B tanks. But it cannot penetrate modern Russian tanks like T-72B3 or T-80 BVM and T-90, or T-80U for that matter, considering of course that it strikes the explosive reactive armor. While it can deal with older tanks, which are undoubtedly being extensively used in this conflict, it can't reliably deal with more modern tanks. But you know what else can penetrate those older tanks? The tanks and the ammunition Ukrainians have been using so far in this war. This is not going to bring anything new to Ukrainians when it comes to the ability to deal with the Russian tanks. And the fact that it is now a NATO gun means absolutely nothing. And people making those claims didn't even know what ammunition Slovenia had. They just say that because such 105mm does exist. So what about the fire control system? I have seen people saying, oh, this tank has thermal, that is all that matters. But sorry to break it to you, it does not. The fire control system is the modified old fire control system of the Slovenian M84 tanks. And it only has passive night vision and no thermals whatsoever. Just like the rest of the things on this tank, the fire control system is also pretty much obsolete. What about the protection? Well, it is also pretty bad. I've seen people claim that the explosive reactive arm on the tank can affect even the kinetic energy projectiles, of course without any service to back it up. All Slovenian services I could find, including the report, only mentioned reduction of the penetration of hollow charge munitions, and not to the great extent either, it will mostly fully protect the tank against regular RPG rockets. Which is not that bad, considering it's the ERA on top of regular steel armor, but that is pretty much on par with the Russian T-62M tank. In fact, this entire tank is pretty much on par with the Russian T-62M. Firepower, fire control system and protection all seem to be pretty comparable. But when Russia brought T-62Ms to the war, everyone was saying how they are bringing in the obsolete tanks. Deservably so, but if you are going to say that T-62M is bad, you can't say that the M55S is good. In fact, the recent modernization of T-62M tanks with thermals is superior to the M55S simply because it has thermals. Now, even if the ERA could affect APFSDS projectiles, it would still not matter. Even the best ERA can't fully stop a projectile, it only reduces its penetration, where the rest of it is then stopped by the thick composite armor of the tank. This tank does not have composite armor. For example, Russian Relict, which is one of the better ERAs that can affect kinetic energy projectiles, degrades around 40% of the penetration according to some sources. Even if we put that on this tank, it would still not be enough, considering that the Russian projectiles can penetrate between 400 and 500 mm of steel depending on the range, they would still go through the 100 mm thick armor of the T-55 or 200 on the turret's front. Therefore, such feature would be completely useless. Hence why they probably originally never bothered with that. Now, I hope you understand why no one ever wanted to buy those tanks from Slovenia. Of course, these tanks are not a bad thing for Ukraine. If this conflict has shown something, it is that no matter what tank you have, it can still get destroyed. And any tank is better than no tank. And this tank is decent enough to be used in this conflict. After all, if Russia can use T-62Ms, why can't Ukraine use M55S? But I hope that now people will at least stop spreading so much misinformation about this tank. That would be all. If you like my content, you can consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you Tobias for providing me with the information about the trucks. And thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.